Good morning. Happy Easter morning. Welcome to St. Mark's. We are thrilled to have you here today, and we are thrilled to have Margaret Galliard play on our beautiful Reuter organ this morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. To begin our service is Pastor Dan Cole. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Let us together share in the confession. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin, our sin, to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attentive to your word we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another in a time of personal reflection. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us share in our hymn All Glory, Loud and Honor. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of who's on first. Today our reading is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 4 and 11 to 14. This reading is sourced from the message, 
a biblical paraphrase. God said to Moses and Aaron while still in Egypt, this month is to be the first month of the year for you. Address the whole community of Israel. Tell them that on the 10th of this month, each man is to take a, li a lamb for his family, one lamb to a house. If the family is too small for a lamb, then share it with a close neighbor, depending on the number of persons involved. Be mindful of how much each person will eat. Your lamb must be, made, must be a healthy male, one year old. You can select from either a sheep or goats. Keep it penned until the 14th day of the month and then slaughter it. The entire community of Israel will do this at dusk. Then take some blood and smear it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which you will eat. You are to eat the meat roasted in a fire that night along with bread made without yeast and bitter herbs. Don't eat any of it raw or boiled in water. Make sure it is roasted, the whole animal, head, legs, and innards. Don't leave any of it until morning. There, if there are leftovers, burn them in the fire. And here is how you are to eat it. Be fully dressed with your sandals on and your stick in your hand. Eat in a hurry. It is the Passover to God. I will go through the land of Egypt on this night and strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, whether human or animal, and bring judgment of all the, on all the gods of Egypt. I am God. The blood will serve as a sign on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Here ends the reading. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Our reading has changed this morning, and I will be reading from the message uh, as we planned, but it will be from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. So listen to the story. Hear the message, a message for today. After the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, not Mother Mary, came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly, the earth reeled and rocked under the feet as God's angels came down. God's angel came down from heaven and came right up to where they were standing. I would be afraid. He rolled back the stone and then sat on it. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garments shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they couldn't even move. The angel spoke to the woman. There is nothing to fear here. In essence, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the only, the one they nailed to the cross. He's not here. He has been raised. Just as he said, come and look at the place where he was placed. Now, get on your way quickly and tell the disciples, he is risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you 
to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. The woman, the women, deep in wonder and full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb. They ran to tell the disciples. Then Jesus met them, stopping them in their tracks. Good morning, Jesus said. They fell to their knees, embraced his feet, worshipped him. And Jesus said, you're holding on to me for dear life. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened like that. Go tell my brothers that they are to go to Galilee and I'll meet them there. Here ends our gospel reading. Let us pray. Father, open our hearts, our souls, and our mind, and may your word speak to us today. Amen. Eliana, my youngest child, one day we were driving down the road, and she was playing around with this ring she had, and somehow it got lost or went down the fan thing. We could not find it. It was her most precious thing she had. She said, Daddy, I've lost my ring. And she was in tears. Got back home. She ran up to her room, buried her head in her pillow, and just cried. She was grieving the loss of her most precious item. And mind you, it was a toy ring. But to her, it was the world. That afternoon, I spent the whole afternoon digging around in my vehicle. And I finally found it. And I ran up to her room after I found it and gave it to her. Dad, you found it. I thought it was completely lost. Thank you. The hugs, the kisses. And then she ran with that ring down to her mom and said, Mom, look, look what has been found. It was lost, but now it is found. She was grieving the loss of that ring. And when she finally saw that ring, she had to go and tell of her joy. That day, the women were grieving. They lost a friend. They lost their Lord. The one that they had so much hope in and dependence upon. And, and now, he's dead. And the women were on their way to the tomb to, to prepare the body. And when they get there, there's this strange being an angel of God. And they were in fear, frightened. And the angel says, fear not. Don't, don't be afraid. Really? Don't be afraid? I'd be afraid. He says, come and see. Look in the tomb. The one that was crucified is now alive. And so they look, they come and they see that he's no longer dead, but alive. And now they're like, where is he at then? Well, no, go. The angel says, go, go and tell. And so they start running and on their way, they run into Jesus and they just grasp on to Jesus just as tight as my daughter grasped onto that ringer, they grasped onto Jesus and didn't want to let go. And Jesus said, you, you, don't be afraid. But go and tell my brothers. Go and tell my brothers of what you've seen here. That I'm not a dead person, but I'm alive. I've risen. A hope that was gone 
a hope is now restored. During these times and these days, slowly, bit by bit, hope has been taken away from you and I. I mean, I remember when one moment it was, we just couldn't do this because of the COVID-19. Next minute it was, you can't have more than 50 people in worship. Okay, and we, we had worship that Sunday and realized we had 51. And that was me. I was that one. Then 10, more loss until absolutely no church. Some churches are streaming, but what's going on right now, and I said this before in a devotion, is we're dealing with loss. We're dealing with grief. We're, just like the ladies were dealing with the grief and the loss of their Messiah, we have lost so much these days. And some of us might feel hopeless. When is that day when America will open up again or when the world will open up again? When is the day when my business will open up? These people with small businesses are suffering. They're in our prayers. But they don't feel hopeful. What can we give? What can we do? What is it that we have seen that we can go and tell others of? Just like my daughter, when she got a ring, ran and told mom the joy. What is it for you right now? What is it that's bringing you joy? What is it that's bringing you hope? Don't be afraid, Jesus says. What a message. Don't be afraid. And go and tell. The only hope I have is Jesus. The hope that you have is Jesus. And what is it when we know this Jesus and we know about this Jesus and who he is and what he does and what he cares about? First Peter says in First Peter, cast all your anxieties on him, that being Jesus, because he cares about you. He cares about you. He loves you. He's given his life for you. And he was resurrected for you. We have a God that's very much alive, very much watching over you and protecting you. This morning I was listening to NPR and they were talking about songs that brought you hope and this one lady said a song, she was a psychologist or a psychiatrist and dealing with people with grief and pain and so forth. And she now is dealing with her own pain and her own grief because her significant other is dying. And she said, during this time, the song that brings her hope is Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Maybe you've heard it, but the lyrics go like, everything's going to be all right. So don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Is that a message being spoken to you today? Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Our God is alive. Indeed, he is resurrected. He is risen. Indeed. For you, he lives. To listen, to care, to love, to redeem you. So, you've come today to see now go and tell of this great love, this great hope that you now have.
Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your love, your care, your resurrection, that you've given us this hope that everything will be okay and we'll get past this. Thank you, Jesus, and help us to share that. In the little things and in the big things, all this in your name. Amen. Let us together share in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the, he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now for the prayers. Please bow your head and join me in prayer, in the prayers of the people. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of the resurrection, from the very beginning, you gave the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in their song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of the resurrection, we pray for the families around the country who are caring for or mourning the loss of those who have contracted <coughs> coronavirus. We weep with those who weep, and we mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. Today we pray especially for Manuel Alvarez, Amy Bentz, Sandy Bushfield, Earl Karvlosky, Mike Collins, Billy Cox, Shirley Fortner, Samantha Geyer, Marina Hinesta, Mar Virginia Ann Chuck Johnson, Pat McComas, Elsie Mills, Mick and Cindy Muley, Diane and Ron Nissen, Francis Pratt, Joan Sayer, Bill Stevens, Marilyn Tennant, Jean and Don Ballou, Gloria Smeestead and her husband, John Mayer, Dave Asani, Mac Spab Mixe, Audrey Voitson, Karina Prieto, and Indira, or Indra, I'm sorry. May they, their doctors, medical teams, caregivers, and families be granted strength, courage, peace, and comfort during this difficult time. In addition, we give thanks today for the second clear test for cancer for Michelle Lucas Chuchu Chuchurelli. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Other prayers may be offered at this time, either out loud or silently in your hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the resurrection, we pray for Johnny and the volunteers who help him, those who conscientiously provide food for the hungry through Project Hand Food Bank six days a week. We pray for food peace and comfort for our neighbors who are struggling with food insecurity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of, in, of resurrection, we also pray for the helpers in hospitals and ambulances, grocery stores and pharmacies, fire and police departments who are caring for those in need. Keep them and their families safe and healthy. Help them find the critical resources, both physical and emotional, to sustain our communities during this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place for all, all for whom we pray, into your eternal care, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now for our offering. You have the thing for the offering? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I realize I don't have the form today that tells you what uh, the address is. I've misplaced it for the moment. I do want to thank you, however, for the generous donations that we've received over the last um, couple of weeks from you, our, our generous donors. Um, it has allowed us to keep the doors open to continue to help and support Project Hand and to uh, reach out to those in need around the community. So we sincerely appreciate your don donations. If you are not a member of the church and you don't know our address, we are St. Mark's Lutheran Church at 580 Hilltop Drive, Chula Vista, California, 91910. You can find it also on our website or on the Facebook page. God bless you and thank you for your generosity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Let's together share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us share in our mission statement. Celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. Amen. Let us together sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Folks, go and tell and share this hope. Have hope that this too shall pass. Amen.